song says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, you know it and it sings. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Can we test 
Continue in our time of praise and worship. The song says, how great is our God. Do you know our God is great? And he's worthy to be praised. Come on and join us. You know it, wherever you are. Come on, put your rock on and give it praise. Hallelujah. The splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wrapped himself in love. Darkness tried to hide and trembled at his voice.
will save you. Come on, I hear you. Come on, you can be the living prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love you so much, Jesus. Come on, I hear you. I hear you. Magnify his name tonight. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, come on. Give God praise. If you're in your hotel room, hallelujah. If you're back in your homes, wherever you are, the Lord is great.
claim this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. District, Florida, and the Commonwealth of the Bahamas unite our voices to say, Welcome. We rejoice and we are glad. Socially distanced, face masks worn, hands washed, vaccinated, and prayed up. And now the hour has come, and now is. The true worshipers must worship God in spirit and in truth. Let the church say, Amen. Let us worship.
say amen. It took us a while to get here. A pandemic tried to bully us, but here we are. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. As we gather here for worship, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. come now in joining in this traditional hymn, not just about relationship with us, but more importantly, about relationship that we have in and through Christ Jesus. And are we yet alive and see each other's face? But that's not the important thing. The more important thing is glory and praise to Jesus give for his redeeming grace. And as we sing with fervor, let us not get weary or quit until we get to that last stanza. Let us take up the cross till we the crown obtain and gladly reckon all things lost so we may Jesus gain. Let us lift up our voices in fellowship and in praise.
souls take delight on whom in affliction we call our comfort by day and our song in the night our hope our salvation our all Is to you, O oh God, that a few of your children that are called by your name have gathered in Orlando, Florida for the 51st session of the General Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And as we have gathered here, we declare if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would not be here this morning. So we pause right now just to say thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, O oh God, for keeping us through dangers seen and unseen. Thank you, God. Though we have come through this pandemic, you have allowed us to see each other's face one more time. bless you and we praise you and we declare to the world that you are a good God. Our God, you promise if your people shall humble themselves and pray, seek your face and turn from their wicked ways. You promised in your word that you will heal our, our land. So God, we come as humble as we know how, asking that as we tarry in this place, that you pour out upon us the power of your Holy Ghost so that we would not leave Orlando, Florida the same way that we came to this place. Come, oh God, and heal us. Make us whole. Restore us. Rejuvenate us. Empower us for the work that you have assigned our hands to do lift up before you this morning every bishop, every pastor, every presiding elder, every member of the African Methodist Episcopal Church touch us oh God from Cape Town to Cape Canaveral touch us oh God in all the four corners of the earth. Touch us, O oh God. We come lifting up before you, your servant, whom you have chosen to speak on your behalf this morning. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, touch Bastine Murphy McKenzie from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. 
Give us open and receptive hearts to receive what you have to say to the African Methodist Episcopal Church in this hour. And when you do it, God, we shall not forget to praise you, to lift you up, and we will rejoice and declare truly the Lord was in this place. We ask these things not because we are worthy, but we pray it in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And for his sake we pray. People of God shout amen. Amen again.
Old Testament scripture lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not known? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strength to the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So ends the reading of the Old Testament scripture lesson. have died with him, we will also live with him, for we endure, we will also reign with him, if we deny him, he will also deny us, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remain them for this, remind them of this, and warn them before your God. If they are to avoid over words which does not no good for only bring those who are listening. Do you do your best to present yourselves to God? as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth, God's word for God's people. Disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples and the one whom Jesus loved was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread. 
And when he dipped it in the dish, so when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon, and Carius. And after he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you're going to do. This is the gospel lesson. shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets.
but I checked this morning. There was not an email that said we couldn't pray in the midst of an opening of a general conference, that we couldn't give God glory, that we have lived through a pandemic, we have seen loved ones die, we have grieved the closing of the physical building, but we are here to give praise to God. Come on, somebody, worship with me and say glory. Hallelujah. We are yet in the presence of an almighty God. Come on, give God glory and praise. The Bicentennial Litany. Let us stand if you can. I'm honored to have written it, and I'm more than honored to read it. From the earliest points in our history, we declared at every connectional meeting, and are we yet alive? to see each other's faith. The answer, the answer always requires our faith to rise above reason, routine, and legacy. The fears and the failures, and the laudable and the incredible, our answer is certain, our witness and our faith is we are, we are not just, we are, our spirits sing with the Savior's joy. We give glory and praise to Jesus for his redeeming grace. The church has been preserved by God's keeping power to proclaim our theme from legacy to mission, a call to prophetic, educational, and social engagement. God's preservation left us through the sadness of life, the challenges of, of, of our faith, and the assault of the enemy. We assemble with joy, some with unjoy, some in strength, others in unstrength, delighted to be in the presence of God and with each other, seeing faces we thought we would never see again, and missing faces we will greet on the other side. We have faced schisms, denominational confusion, digital divides, doctrinal discord, and global crisis. But fighting without and fears within did not win. For the AME brand was manifested in creative ways by the resilience of local congregations and the leadership of the church.
yet out of all, God has brought us by divine love. And still our God still helps and hides our life above. By God's love, we are here in Orlando and in Africa, never giving up, never turning around. We are here to boast of God's redeeming power and take up the cross till we the crown obtain. We are here and yet alive. And the people said, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God being good to you. Woke you up this morning. Brought you through this coronavirus and you alive and where? Well. If you're not ashamed to hang up on yourself, to wrap up in yourself, stand up on your feet all over the house. Come on, somebody. Give me some praise. Come on, somebody. God being good to you. Come on, take off some praise. You're not too shy to hang up, to wrap up in yourself. Stand up on your feet. Just go thank you. I, I got to admit, I have a new understanding of this offering. When I was 18 years old and I was on my way to the United States of America, a old lady by the name of Mother why can't call me and say, we want to pray for you. And I went to the church in Lhasa Trinidad for them to pray for me. They were called the Missionary Society of Lhasa Trinidad. I really was involved as a young man, but I was so radical at the time that I didn't pay attention. But that group prayed for me and then gave me $300. And I went home. And I'll never forget it. I started thinking that that offering plate for mission, beloved offering, it was out of those dollars that those people in Africa, some of them live on $5 a month, some no dollars a month, were able at 18 year old, some, some, some 35 plus years ago, see that in my life. I made a commitment to God that whenever this offering come around, Wherever I am, I'm going to give because I believe I'll 
first giving is our tithe, the second to that for the least of these, those who are less fortunate than we are, those who are struggling, those who are trying to find a way in life. So I'm going to ask you this, this morning, those of you in the on this, in this sacred virtual space that will start this offering up with $20 and those who can give 20 please do 20 if you're going to write a check write it up to the AME church wherever you are we are in different spaces on this virtual sacred place I ask you this, to give wherever you are those of us who are in Africa listening Whatever method in which we have asked for you to give, I ask that you will give cheerfully for the least of these, for those who have, uh, are struggling. And so as I ask uh, M. Camp to lead us in praise, may we, uh, Usher will come and we will give our beloved offering, our mission offering, our offerings for others. Our offering for the least of these, those who are struggling. And I want to thank God for African Methodism. We have done so well throughout 200 plus years. This church has supported the least of these, for whom I'm a recipient of that. Will we please give our offering? Ushers, will you please come? Ushers. Where the ushers? And I'm going to ask M. Kim, we are prepared to lead us as we give our mission offering. Give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. If you need a running over blessing, this is your opportunity to seed into the lives of those who need us the most. Where are the ushers? Oh. Okay, how do you do? Okay, they got the thank you. Finance committee, will you please come and do what you do best? Committee. He said they will pass the plate. Thank you. Let's do it a little different. Pass your offering from your left to your right so that when they bring the basket, the finance committee, they can pick you up quickly. Please do that. individual room and let it let somebody bring it to this room once it's collected
some of thee, O oh Lord, and of our own have we given thee, may we stand. everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. AMEs are assembled in this room and in various adjoining rooms in this vicinity. Those who gathered around their devices than 40 nations across the world. It's preaching time. Thank God for the preacher for this appointed hour and this appointed place. Bishop Vashti Murphy McKinney. native of Baltimore, Maryland, hails from an entrepreneurial family. Her grandparents founded the Afro-American newspaper. Their five daughters all worked in various departments of that paper. And their granddaughter had her grandma's name, Vashti, began writing her first article at 16 years of age. She has served as a journalist, as a radio programmer, as a model matriculated at the Morgan University, and then one day her eyes fell on a tall, dark, handsome brother named Stan. Dropped out of college. husband played for the Baltimore Bullets and got transferred to Phoenix. Played for the Phoenix Sun and she followed her husband. But then they moved back this way and Vashti went back to college, this time at University of Maryland. Graduated from there. Her career began to focus 
game focus, that of a journalist, radio personality. But then in the late 70s, she found herself sitting in Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Baltimore. And from those pews, God called her into the Christian ministry. She went back to school, gained her master's in theology, and then her doctorate in theology from the United Theological Seminary. started pastoring on the eastern shore of Maryland, a little church located on a farm, horse farm. And from there, she was transferred to Oak Street in town. Both places, she left her mark. One day, I got a call from Bishop H. Hartford Brooklyn. And he said, John, you know, pain is open. I said, I know. He said, that's a connectional church. I said, yeah, I know. He said, I'm, I'm looking at Vashti. She's doing a fantastic job. I said, yes, I know. He said, but I'm scared. We haven't had a woman pastor a connectional church. I don't know how the people will take it. He said, what do you think about it? I said, Bishop, is, is she the best you see? He said, yes. I said, you don't see anybody stands out in your mind that has achieved more? He said, no. I said, then you have to send her. The rest is history. She went to that church and not only captured that church, but captured that community and gained the attention of the city. She told me that she felt God was calling her to the episcopacy. And she began to run for the bishopric and many people said to her who were in power, uh, you'll make it one day but not now. That's the language of those who have power talking to those who they feel do not have power. It always is not your turn. But the General Conference of 2000 thought it was her turn. And this Baltimore woman shattered the stained glass for women all across the nation. And it became national news. If I could just take a moment, they said that Africa would never accept a woman as a bishop. And on her first district, in the 18th district, uh, it was a tradition that the bishop would go out to meet the chief and lead the chief into the village. Bishop Vashti went out to meet him. But for those who thought he would not follow her into the village, when they looked up, the chief was walking and Vashti was riding his horse. She's been riding the gospel horse for over 20 years in the Episcopacy. And what a job she's done from the 18th to the 13th, and now to the fabulous 10th Episcopal District. And as I introduce her to you, I want you to know 
in the 10th district, she has finished strong, just completed building a dormitory, a student center, and that chapel, which now stands as the largest chapel in African Methodism, has been renamed the vast time Murphy McKenzie Sanctuary. Come on, AMEs, are you ready to hear a word from the Lord? From Stan's wife, three children's mother, two children's grandmother, and those of us who know her as Bishop Vashti. Come on, get your foot off the brake. It's time to go higher. Come on, Holy Ghost, feed us until we want no more. Right. 
give you praise. For, for what? You did what for me, God? For every trial? For every trial. What did you do? You see me Did we say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Well, this. For every disappointment uh, that you help me out, uh, I give you praise. Uh, oh, glory to God. Uh, come on in here. Uh, let's talk to God uh, with our minds open uh, and our hands up. Uh, for every mountain, uh, for every molehill, uh, for every issue, uh, for every circumstance, uh, for everything that got in the way. Uh, God, I give you the praise today. Uh, oh, yes, I do. Uh, I praise you. Uh, you are awesome. Uh, you are miraculous. Uh, oh, look what you have already done. Uh, For everything, for everything, for everything, I say what? that you allowed to us to gather one more time on two different continents, but yet one together in Christ and in African Methodism. Thank you, God, for what you have already done in our lives. And now we thank you in advance for healing in this place, deliverance in this place, salvation in this place. Come on, God, work your work, do your thing. And I, your servant, get out of the way that you would have your way today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody, help me say amen. It's all right to say amen again. Ooh, turn to your labor and say, ooh, Lord. Ooh, Lord, again. Ah, yes. To senior bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Bishop Adam Jefferson Richardson and Supervisor Richardson, to the president of the Council of Bishops, Bishop E. Henning Byfield and Supervisor Byfield. To the President of the General Board, Bishop Wilfred Messiah and Supervisor Messiah. To the Chair of the General Conference Commission, Bishop John White and Supervisor White. To my colleagues in the Episcopal Service, especially the class of 2000, the best there is, <laughs> amen to the general officers, presiding elders, pastors, and preachers, to chaplains, connectional officers, delegates, and alternates, observers here and across the continent of Africa and the Caribbean. Together we say praise the Lord. To my spouse, Supervisor Stan McKenzie, who is with me in spirit and who is watching online. For the first time in 41 years, he's not sitting in front of me cheering me on, but yet he's cheering me on from where he is. He is a, a solid rock for me, so that the butterfly always has a place to land. I've said it often. One day my mother told me, said, girl, you're no longer a butterfly, for every time you deny the caterpillar waves, you are now an eagle. So now the eagle has a place to land. To our children, John, Jasmine, and Joy, who have shared their parents with congregations and the Episcopal districts. To our nephew, Larry McKenzie, who is like a son to us. To Bishop John, Richard Bryan, thank you for your generous presentation. And to my mother, my, my mother in ministry, the Reverend Dr. Cecilia Williams Bryant, 
I thank you and both of you for shepherding me and my family in this journey. To all of the congregations the Lord has allowed me to serve across the 2nd Episcopal District, to the 18th Episcopal District, where we found strength to climb, to the 13th District, Team 13, where we learned to believe, and to the 10th Episcopal District, and to the 10th Episcopal District, and to the 10th Episcopal District, Texas Strong, where we learn to be intentional in our ministry focus, where we start strong, stay strong, and stand strong. Amen. To my sisters in public service who let me know that they are praying for me, as well as the Circle of Love and the Women of Salem, who are praying, and all of the prayer warriors across the 10th Episcopal District keep praying us through. And keep praying for the many moving parts of this hybrid gen general conference. Our text this morning now comes from two pieces of scripture. The first is Habakkuk, the first chapter, verse 5. Look among the nations, observe, be astonished, wonder, because I'm doing something in your days. You would not believe it if you were told. And then our second comes from Mark, the sixth chapter, verses 36 through 38. When Jesus landed and saw a crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place. They said it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take more than a half year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have, he asked. Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five loaves and two fish. And our theme and thought of meditation is on our text. How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And our theme is between what is and what could be. Could you say it with me? Between what is and what could be. You could be a little louder than that between what is and what could be. Every now and then we find ourselves with a five loaves and two fish kind of day. That's the kind of day with multiplicity of problems that refuse to be solved. Five loaves and two fish kind of day when you were looking for one thing and got something else, like the disciples in our text. They thought they were going on a day trip with Jesus uh, uh, for some downtime and conversation, uh, but ended up with something else. So all day uh, shared learning experience with over 5,000 people. Uh, it's the kind of day you find out that every day is a blessed day, uh, and at the same time, uh, you realize that evil refuses to take a day off and slithers into your life. Uh, are you listening to me this morning? Uh, five loaves and two fish kind of day. Uh, where you must do the work that others deem impossible, but only become possible when you put it into the hands of God. The, time, the kind of day where folk make it their mission to compromise your integrity, betray your trust, hurt those they claim to love, and dishonor God without ever feeling a twinge of guilt or a flicker of conscience. I'll say amen myself. Five loaves and two fish day, uh, where everyone seems to be in a blame assignment mode, uh, pointing fingers at everybody else uh, without ever taking responsibility for their own actions. Uh, five loaves, uh, two fish day, uh, where it looks like someone got their knee on your neck, uh, on your finances, your career, and your future. Uh, it's the day uh, where it feels like everybody's trying to wipe you out, uh, and a day where you got to try to get back up and start all over again. Uh, Five loaves, two fish day, uh, 
where your game plan unravels. Uh, the weak spots in your strategy is revealed. Uh, your faith walk isn't as tight as you thought it was. Uh, the multiplicity of issues uh, strangles creativity to death uh, and tell uh, innovation it is not needed around here. Five low, two fish uh, kind of day uh, when what you need uh, you don't have. Uh, a day when needs outweigh resources uh, when what needs to be done uh, has never been done before uh, and it has never been been done by you. I said five loaves, uh, two fish day, uh, where our well-being is hijacked uh, uh, for personal gain, privilege, and self-interest. Uh, no longer hooded uh, behind closed doors, uh, no longer in secret meetings, uh, but as large and in charge, uh, storming the steps of the U.S. Capitol uh, and uh, planning and doing, suppressing our vote. Uh, that's a five low, two fish kind of day. Uh, it's a day where you're struggling with trade-offs, uh, like the crowd in our text. Uh, uh -huh. Do we send the multiplicities of issues away uh, to fend for themselves uh, or do we go get the sustentation for them? Uh, struggling with the kind of trade-offs uh, we've been doing for more than a half a year uh, since this global pandemic showed up uh, on every continent, in every country, uh, with its breath-stealing self, uh, an invisible enemy uh, that has initiated a new type uh, of cancel culture. Uh, it canceled sports, uh, canceled summer camp, uh, canceled vacation, uh, canceled graduation, uh, canceled wedding plans, uh, canceled cross-country trips, uh, canceled festivals, uh, canceled contests, uh, canceled picnics, uh, canceled the beach, uh, canceled the family reunion, uh, it canceled outdoor, uh, closed restaurants, uh, closed bars and gyms, uh, grounded airplanes, uh, canceled nursing homes and hospital visitation, and it canceled church uh, as we knew it. Uh, canceled in-person annual conference, uh, presiding elder quarters, uh, even our general conference, uh, but the liquor stores stayed open. Everybody has a five loaves and two fish kind of day. Every pastor, every preacher, every presiding elder, uh -huh, every Episcopal servant has had one of those five loaves and two fish kind of day. Every church, yeah, yeah, every Episcopal district, uh, every connectional and general officer, and every generation uh, has a five loaves, two fish uh, kind of day that changes uh, the trajectory uh, of their future. Huh. I, I know what a five low, two fish kind of day feels like. I, I know what it looks like. I, I know what it acts like. I, I've had a few five and two days myself. Uh, but let me tell you uh, that your name, your title, uh, your social economic status uh, in the community, the church, the denomination, or the country uh, does not exempt you uh, from a five and two kind of day. Uh, oh, glory to God. Uh, your faith uh, doesn't exempt you from that kind of day. Uh, it Arrives just like trouble uh, unannounced uh, in your house. Uh, that's the day uh, where you want to send for the elders to pray. Uh, start opening the drawers and look uh, uh, for every piece uh, of your armor because you're going to need the helmet. Uh, you're going to need the sword and the shield. Uh, it's the kind of day uh, where you say, Lord, fight my battle uh, because this one is just too big for me to handle. Uh, a day you knew was coming, uh, but you didn't want to arrive. Uh, and all of a sudden you said out loud, uh, you mean there is nothing here? but five loaves and two fish, that's it? that's it? Jesus, do you see how many people are here? That's all you have, five and two to keep your family together. That's all you have to keep your marriage tight and your mind right and your ministry going and the church healthy. Is, is that all we have to seek out and save the lost, the cheer, the fallen, the clothe the naked and feed the hungry. Is that all we have? It's the place where you wonder whether your five and two is enough. Come on, Jesus, help us when we find ourselves with less than what's needed or when we need to pivot our plans. Come on, Jesus, help us when we wake up one day to find ourselves just like we are today between what is and what could be. Let me exegete the text now. This occasion in the life of Jesus Christ is told in another gospel, but I like, I like Mark as our prophetic anchor this morning 
because Mark tells us what it means, uh -huh, that Je what it means that Jesus is the Son of God and what it means to follow him. He does it all by skipping over the genealogy, the star, the shepherds, uh, skipping over the manger and the three wise persons, including the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What then does this gospel do? Well, Mark is a quick read, but don't go so fast that you miss his message. In the midst of this gospel, Mark revolutionizes the idea of God. He pushes up against an ancient opinion that God is unchanging and unaffected, but tells us of a God who is awesome, who understands, who has compassion, who is involved, and is concerned about our concern. Mark does it by not just telling us what Jesus said, but showing us what Jesus did. This Jesus not just what he spoke, but what he did. Talk is easy. Anybody can talk a good day. Ah, but yes, surely what Jesus said was important, but Mark backs up what he says with what he did. This Jesus cast out an unclean spirit. This Jesus had a miracle demonstrating his power over forces of evil. The people of Capernaum were amazed and asked, what new doctrine is this? This Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. This Jesus demonstrated his power over sickness. And people brought the sick and demon-possessed to him to be healed. I'm talking about this Jesus who healed a paralyzed man. This Jesus demonstrating power over sickness and his authority to forgive. This Jesus healing a man with a withered hand. This is all by the third chapter, by the way. In this story, Mark tells us of not only Jesus' power over sickness, but his authority to do good on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees wanted to accuse him of breaking the Sabbath and began to plot against him. This Jesus calmed the storm by chapter 4. This Jesus demonstrated power over nature. This Jesus, when the disciples were afraid and asked, who can this be? This Jesus, uh, by chapter 5, raises Jairus' daughter. This Jesus uh, demonstrated power over death. Uh, this Jesus uh, uh, talked to the family of Jairus, uh, is overcome with amazement, uh, all before reaching our text uh, in chapter 6. And Jesus goes home to be among us people, and people are talking as people will do. This is not the Son of God. This can't be. This is Elias. That's who this is. And the secular ruler of the day, Herod, thinks Jesus is John the Baptist up from the grave. Now, understand that John didn't do any miracles at all, but somehow uh, Herod thinks that maybe because uh, he had gone away for a while, he came back more powerful than he was. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was out of sight and out of mind. And when he came back, he came back with more power. Well, beloved, the Lord will put you in a place where your enemies can't reach you, not by death, but by location. The Lord will locate you in a place out of sight, out of mind, until God is ready for you to handle that enemy or until God is ready to handle the enemy for you. Uh, Esther was out of sight and out of mind in the king's harem until uh, it was time for Haman to be hung uh, and Mordecai restored. Uh, Moses uh, was on the backside of the Medean desert uh, until uh, it was time to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Pharaoh. Uh, Joseph uh, was located in a pit in Potiphar's house and prison uh, until uh, it was time uh, uh, to save Egypt and bring his family out of famine. Come on, walk with me, brother. Uh, Joseph was Moses' armor bearer uh, until uh, it was time to cross the Jordan River uh, and into the promised land. Uh, David uh, kept sheep uh, until uh, it was time for giant killing. Uh, Deborah uh, sat under her palm tree uh, until uh, it was time to put her war clothes on. Uh, the prophetess Anna uh, prayed and praised God every day uh, until uh, she saw the baby Jesus in town. Uh, uh, check your location. Uh, look around you where you are. Uh, what you think uh, is a coincidence uh, just might be the providence of God. Uh, so be careful. Uh, uh -huh. Start thinking that the place you think uh, is too big for you to handle uh, or beneath your capability. Uh, 
just be careful. Uh, look at your location uh, and start to uh, be careful about thinking uh, that the location uh, is unworthy of your time uh, or your talent. Uh, too small to go brag about to your friends. Uh, be careful uh, that the place uh, that looks inconsequential, uh, uh -huh, uh, it doesn't look promising. Uh, it's not the place for promotion. Uh, it's not the place you want to be. Uh, just may be the place the Lord wants you to be until uh, your until arise. Uh, I don't know uh, what your uh, until is going to arrive. Uh, all I know uh, is that the Lord will keep uh, every promise he made to you. Uh, all I know uh, is that things will work out for your good. Uh, all I know uh, is that you will reap if you faint not. Uh, all I know uh, is nothing will separate you uh, from the love of God. Yes, uh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, uh, but not until, uh, not until the breaking of the day. Uh, not until the fullness of time. Not until God is ready to bust a move in your life. Not until justice rolls down like a mighty river. Oh, glory to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, until. Well, there's conversation in the chat room. And Herod is reminiscing about the beheading of John the Baptist. It was a true crime story confession. I, he said, I beheaded him. Remember that now he was thinking, he was thinking that Jesus was John come back from the grave. And so Jesus sends the disciples out on their first ministry mission. Well, glory to God. They, they get to go out on their ministry mission by themselves. They finally got out of the boy of examiners and they going out on a on a ministry mission by themselves they've been hanging out with Jesus for a while now uh, walking on hot dusty roads when things were going well uh, this crowd saw the blind see and the lame walk and life come back into dead bodies oh glory to God uh, they saw what Jesus did they heard what he said and they stood by him uh, when things didn't look so good and when things were going well uh, when the religious uh, status quo uh, and the also rans uh, challenged his identity this Jesus uh, gave them power to do what others could not do this Jesus uh, gave them power over unclean spirits uh, and off they went uh, casting out demons uh, doing the impossible uh, impacting lives uh, working miracles uh, while preaching their trial sermon uh, and then they come back with a round report uh, here is the account of our stewardship Jesus uh, they came back happy uh, look this is what we did and uh, this is how it went Jesus uh, and this is what we saw Jesus and this is what worked Jesus and this is what we got to work on whoo Jesus this is wonderful and look at all the people uh, and all the people crowded around them. This is cool. This is cool. They were getting accolades and folk were coming up wanting to get the same blessing. And then you get a sense in the text that maybe just maybe Jesus knew that with all that was going on, the disciples needed a break. They were out of breath. They were so caught up in that they needed to engage in some self-care for Mark's record says that the people prevented them from having a meal can we have a can we have a little uh, personal conversation here can, can we have a little personal conversation uh, uh, be careful my brothers and sisters when the people and the work prevent you from at least sitting down to your mac and cheese, your sweet potatoes, your fried chicken, and your corn. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't eat that now. Uh, be careful, my brothers and sisters, when the people and the work keep you from your organic avocado sandwich. Be careful, my brothers and sisters, when the people and the work keep you from eating right and keep you from taking a day off. Am I talking to anybody in here? Be careful when the people and the work keep you from going on a real vacation, not just coming to the meeting, coming early and staying late. Are you, uh, are you listening here? Huh? Uh, be careful that the work and the people uh -huh, uh -huh, uh, uh, what will keep you and your family apart. 
Uh -huh. Give your people a break. I'm saying giving your people a break. Give yourself a break. Get engaging in self-care and developing and deploying your spiritual disciplines of prayer and praise and study and meditation and fasting and worship not to get a sermon up for Sunday or to do Bible study on Tuesday night, but engage to nourish and strengthen your spiritual life. So Jesus takes them on a, a short boat trip to a remote place. And instead of taking them across the water to the Hilton, to the Hyatt, to the Rosen Center, the Rosen Hotel, to Rosen Shingle Creek, the Embassy Suites, he takes them to Motel 2, not to Motel 6. And instead of downtown, instead of downtime, it was back to work. And instead of a few moments to reflect on the identity issue, the beheading of John the Baptist and the inaugural ministry mission, it was back to the daily grind, managing multiplicities and multitudes, whether it be people or problems. The people who made it hard for them to catch their breath, stalked them to the remote place and got there before Jesus and his crew. Now, Jesus saw the interruption for the time off now was going to be a time on. The private was going to become public. Relax became gearing up and refreshing themselves became refreshing others. Yet, the Lord didn't chastise the people like he chastised his mother that day. Woman, my time has not come. Yet, oh, how he chastised the Syrophoenician woman uh, with I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Or how he threw the money changers out of the temple. This time, this Jesus sees them differently. He saw them and had compassion on them, revolutionizing the idea of God. And he taught them the things of the kingdom until dinner time. And as the story goes, the disciples said the folk need to eat Jesus. There are no restaurants around here. There are no fast food. There's no 7-Eleven. Uber Eats and DoorDash don't come out this far, Jesus. And they had arrived at what I call the what is part. This is what it is, Jesus. is getting late. People are hungry. You need to send these folk away. You think we should go buy food for them? It would take more money than we have, a half year's wages to feed this crowd. That's what it is. Let them go find their own food. They're able. Let them go around to the surrounding villages. That's what this is. Who leaves home without making provisions, Jesus? That's what it is. It is as if they miss the lesson of the ministry mission. Remember, God has a way of putting us in position to force us to see our strengths as well as our weakness. Remember, Jesus had already sent them out with a script. Uh -huh, this is how you do it. Uh, this is what you're supposed to do. But then will come a moment when you are confronted with the unexpected and there is no script. And so you get stuck at the what is part and have a hard time moving into the what could be part. Ever been there? Go ahead and say amen. Wait, 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 wait. Where are the instructions, Jesus? Where's the book? Where's the DVD? Where's the revival? Where's the conference? The last time you sent us out, you told us what to do. But look at here, look at here. Jesus has already moved from what is to what could be. Too many people in a desolate place, too long time he's moved from what is too many people to too few resources, resources in a desolate place. Jesus sees it differently. He moves to what could be. He says, what? Give them something. You, you give them something. Seriously, Jesus. I mean, seriously. Uh, seriously. Uh, beloved, whenever you start to believe that what you have is not enough, that's when you start to believe that you think that you're not enough. And that's because your enoughness is attached to what you have. Your enoughness is validated by what you have instead of who you are in Christ Jesus instead of who Jesus is. How many loaves do you have? Jesus said, go and see. Go and see. And when they came back, they said, we got five loaves and two fishes. This is now their five loaves and two fish day. Jesus saw it, the situation, a different way. The disciples saw it another way. The text says it's there that Jesus saw them, and when he saw them, he had compassion. 
Uh, the disciples saw them as a problem, and they wanted Jesus to put the problem away. Send this problem away. Just like us, we got problems that we want to go away. Pandemic go away. The disease go away. The lack of resources. Come on, Jesus, just send it away. The lack of connectivity, just send it away. Just send the budget away. The WMS budget, the lay budget, the presiding elder budget, the Episcopal district budget, the connectional budget. Go away. Driving, trying to drive a 21st century church along the digital highway on the backs of an aging population. Jesus, send it away. What the disciples saw was the problem. That's the what it is part. What Jesus saw, however, was an opportunity. That's the what could be part. There is a gap between what is and what could be. And my adaptive leadership, doctoral students in the room, know what this is called. This is called the knowing and doing gap. We know what it is, but we can't seem to get there. We know what needs to be done. We just can't figure it out. We know what we want, but we can't seem to put the structure together until someday becomes the eighth day of the week. But when God begins to shift normal and regular and ordinary and business as usual into a new reality, there will always be a conflict between what is and what could be. Yeah. Conflicts between what people think they know uh, and what reality is. Uh, conflict between natural and supernatural. Uh, the invisible and uh, the invisible. Uh, conflicts between the move of God uh, and the pace of denominational culture. Uh, one of the greatest temptations uh, between what is and what could be uh, is to fall into the trap uh, of quick fixes. Uh, doing something to keep people happy. Uh, uh, doing things. Uh, uh -huh, to appease uh, the power cell or the crowd without really addressing the problem or the but without a concern that what is fixed is fixed right. Uh, Jesus says, what do you have? Uh, and go and see. Uh, oh, glory to God. Uh, Every miracle that Jesus performed uh, brought change over forces and systems uh, that heretofore believed uh, that they had the final say uh, regarding human uh, and institutional predicaments. Uh, Jesus sent them the search uh, for possibilities uh, because the Lord doesn't always uh, send the problem away, uh, but will give us power uh, to handle it, uh, strength uh, to deal with it, uh, or point out in the right direction to find it. Jesus says, go and see. And when we do, we will discover the possibilities and the power to create new normals according to the dictates of the kingdom, not the whims of the culture. We'll find courage to color outside the lines of the politically correct and a savior uh, in whatever he is doing uh, and make the five loaves uh, and two fish uh, to handle uh, the multiplicity uh, of problems. Uh, I hear you. I hear you well. Uh, all we have uh, is five and two. Uh, but all it takes uh, is a mustard seed faith uh, and you can move mountains uh, out of the way. Uh, all you need uh, It'll fill the offering plate. All you need is to gather enough jars to fill it with oil. All you need is the fringe on the hem of his garment and be healed. All you need is the jawbone of an ass and you'll survive. Glory to God. All you need is a stick to part water, a stone to bring down. Jesus is not calculating data. He's imagining the possibilities. Let's imagine the possibilities with him. Come here. Come up here, Habakkuk. Habakkuk says, look among the nations. Look among the nations of our global organization. 
Habakkuk says, be astonished. Be wonder. Because I'm doing something in your days. Your days, your days, your days. I'm doing something in your days. You would not believe if you were told. God is up to something. Let's go and see the possibilities. What would you look like? Where would you be? What amazing possibilities would Jesus do through you if you ever got to the what could be? What would the church look like if the church would take the holy dare to go and see? What would the AME church look like if God had his way with us? If God had his way with the church, can we come together and see what the Lord will do with our five and our two? Surely, when we take the holy dare of God to go and see, your priorities will change. New possibilities will emerge. New levels will be reached. Potentials will be developed. Fear will go into submission. Gaps will be closed. And resources multiply. When we see, we'll see the answer is already in the room. You missed it. The answer is already in the room. When the boys went to go look, and when they went to see, another gospel tells us there was a boy in the midst. All he had was five loaves and two fish, and he was willing to share. The answer to the predicament didn't come from an expected source, didn't come from the mature, didn't come from the elder, didn't come from the bishop, didn't come from the pastor, didn't come from the senior. Uh, the senior seasons among us, uh, but it came from the next uh, generation. God will put uh, the answer in your midst uh, of what you already have and see uh, it's there. Uh, it didn't come from an expected source, uh, yet the boy had uh, what we need. Uh, do not despise uh, the next generation, uh, those who are coming up behind us. Uh, but give them a chance, open a door for them, make a way for them, but they just may have an answer for what we are going through right now. Take the dare and see the possibilities. Come on, take the dare. Step outside of selfish and selfish interests. Come on, take the dare. For God is still working miracles. Take the dare. All we have to do is get to the other side of the gap to what could be. And God will take care of our needs and give you leftovers for later on. Can we co-create with God? Can we co-create with God? Can we co-create with God? A world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them. Can we co-create with God? A world where different races and culture live in harmony and mutual respect. Uh, can we co-create a world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love? Can we co-create a world where women and women's giftedness is valued and her body is not maligned and her children abused? Can we create a world where the innocence of children is protected from predators in a world that has learned that love is greater than hate and kindness is a sign of strength? Can we co-create a world where physical and mental well-being and wholeness is valued and supported? Can we go and see the possibilities. The difference between what is and what could be is seen. There is an ancient tradition in the southern region of Africa where I and others served and when we greeted each other, we would say, Sayubona. And it's, it's more than a ho hello. It means we see you. And, and the answer is, Yebo, Sayubon. It means we see you too. 
we see you is not just an acknowledgement in the ancient Zulu tradition. It means that we create space for you to be with us. It's more than a hello. It is acknowledging the presence of the other. Uh, I, I recognize you. I value you. And what can we do in this space together? Now, now I want you to stand. Whether, you, whether you're in your home on the continent or the Caribbean, in your delegation room or you stand, I want you to stand. Because seeing is important. It is difficult to get to the what is if you don't see. So I want you to turn to the person who is physically distanced from you. Look them in the eye. One of you will say, I am here to be seen. And the other person will respond, I see you. Do you understand the directions? Look at one person and say, I am here to be seen. And the other person responds to you, I see you. Can we try that together? Look deeply into their eyes. Come on, we can. I know it's dark in here, but just do the best you can. I am here to be seen. And respond, I see you. I am here to be seen. I see you. I am here to be seen. I see you. Now, now change it, now change it. The other person who was saying, I, I, I see you, now you, you say, I am here to be seen. Come on, mean it from the depths of your toes. Say it from the gut. Speak it out of your heart. I'm here to be seen. I see you. I'm here to be seen. I see you. I'm here to be seen. I see you. Wait, there's another part to it. There's another part to it. I'm here to be heard. And the response is, I hear you. Come on, go back to that neighbor and say, I'm here to be heard. I hear you. I'm here to be heard. I hear you. Swaziland is here to be heard. What's your response? Botswana is here to be heard. What's your response? Mozambique is here to be heard. What's your response? South Africa is here to be heard. What's your response? Haiti is here to be heard. What is your response? Jamaica is here to be heard. The Dominican Republic is here to be heard. Florida is here to be heard. Georgia is here to be heard. North Carolina is here to be heard. South Carolina is here to be heard. Virginia is here to be heard. Maryland is here to be heard. What's your response? Utah is here to be heard. California is here to be heard. I'm not hearing you. Missouri is here to be heard. Texas is here to be heard. Canada is here to be heard. India is here to be heard. And when we see our priorities will change possibilities will arise. Fear will go into remission. Self-interest will take a holiday when we see. When we really hear 
beneath what is being said, our priorities will change. New possibilities will be realized. Fear will go into submission and self-interest will take a holiday. They, they call this opening the doors of the church. And, and, and if you are in somewhere watching online and you haven't said yes to this, go and see Jesus who will introduce you to what could be in your life. You can say yes right now. Put it in the chat. Put some hearts up. Say, I, I want this go and see Jesus for myself. You looking for a church? We got one for you on every continent. And we'll help you be somewhere. But this is the call. Who is bold enough to accept the holy dare of Jesus? To go and see what possibilities are out there. If you are ready to tell Jesus, I accept the dare. I'm not going to be stuck in what is. And I'm ready to see the possibilities that you have for me, my life, my family. I'm, I'm ready to see the possibilities for my church. I'm willing to see the possibilities for my preachment, my pastor. Okay, I'm willing. I believe that God has more. If we say yes, if we say yes, if that's you, come on, y'all, hurry up. It's lunchtime. Hurry up. Come on here. I'm willing to take the dare. I'm willing to go say yes. 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 Don't be standing around looking to see if anybody else is going to take the dare. You need to go and see for yourself. Yes. My soul says. Yeah. I'm going to see what the Lord has for me. I'm going to look around beyond the physicality of my vision to see what the Lord has.
redeemed in the Lord shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let the church say amen. Come on and let the church say amen again. Now let the redeemed in the Lord shout hallelujah. Come on and give God praise for that word today. Come on and give God praise for the preacher. Come on and give God praise for his presence in this place. As we continue to worship God, as we continue to worship God, as we continue to worship God, I'm asking you to prepare to worship him through giving. To prepare to worship him through giving. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do, wherever you are, in the district rooms or watching on Zoom or Facebook Live or whatever virtual platform you are on, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to be still and know that God is God. Inside of the district room, I'm asking the, that the members of the Statistics and Finance Commission in each Episcopal district, if you would move to the front to receive this offering. Those of you who are sharing with us in worship virtually, online, there are platforms that would be placed on the screen in which you can give electronically. And if you're not able to scan the QR codes, you can go to Givelify. If you have Givelify on your phone, look for AME in parentheses, African Methodist Episcopal Church. Whatever method you are going to use, I'm going to ask you to prepare your heart for giving. The Bible says they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every person shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. As you prepare to give today, as we prepare to move into not a new quadrennial, but our first triennial, as we prepare to move forward in ministry after all God has brought us through, I'm going to ask you as a worshiper, if you will worship the Lord wherever you are with a gift of $100. I'm going to ask you to get that gift and place it in your hand, your right hand, wherever you are. I'm going to ask you if you're using the electronic platform to give that you raise that electronic platform in your right hand as we prepare 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 to give an offering unto God because we did not come to this general conference to this 51st quadrennial session of the general conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church in person hybrid or virtually after what God has brought us through and how good God has been we did not come to get before the presence of God in this general conference empty-handed. So let us prepare. Would you please place that gift in your right hand and lift it up wherever you are? And whatever that gift is, if you, if you know God has moved in your life and you're able to do more than 100, then you do more than 100. Don't let the asking limit your blessing. And if you're not able to give a 100, Wherever you are, give your best offering unto God. Hands lifted with your offerings, heads bowed, eyes closed. God, we love you. We exalt you. We esteem you. We extol you. We magnify you. We lift you. We glorify your name. You are wonderful. You are glorious. You are a sovereign God, a God who can do whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it. And God, we thank you that in every season of our lives, you did not do it without us. So as we come today to present sacrifices unto you, bless these gifts, bless these offerings, 
in whatever currency we offer it unto you today. God, receive these gifts, that these gifts, God, will be representative of the sacrifices we have made unto you and what you have done unto us. Now, God, bless this moment of giving. And through this giving moment, God, work miracles, answer questions, solve problems, give solutions. Hey, God, restore us in Jesus' name. Amen. Go to Giveify, as the bishop said, you will, in caps, A-M-E, for African Methodist Episcopal Church will appear. Our address is 1134 11th Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 2001. You select the amount of money you want to give, and then a folder will appear where we will say 2021 June Conference, and then follow the directions. Follow the directions given to you by Brother Richards. And now the Finance Committee will move forth the Statistics and Finance and receive offerings in this room as the Statistics and Finance persons in the various Episcopal District rooms will receive offerings in those rooms. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, you may give your offerings, give a buy or scan the QR code that was on the screen or will be back on the screen for your opportunity to share in giving today. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press, to, press down, shaken together shall men give unto your bosom. The key to prosperity is to give God his portion first. As you give, give cheerfully, not grudgingly, nor of necessity.
medallion of office like Elijah's manner, mantle is useful only when it is hallowed in service. It is sacred only when it attaches to a cause beyond itself. And the medallion of office is like the mantle of Elijah. It's larger and greater than any one person or any one time. It is to be passed on, handed down from generation to generation, growing lustrous from use and rendering the lustrous to its use. So, Bishop Bajir, with this medallion, we hand it down history of God's people in their endeavor to liberate and reconcile all humanity through the African Methodist Episcopal Church. This medallion represents how far we have come and how far we have yet I received this medallion, mindful of the responsibilities and trust encroached with my accepting it. My sister, it has pleased Almighty God to permit you to become by succession the presiding officer among chief pastors in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Your fellow bishops, along with the people of the church, we hereby solemnly confirm your presidency. You surely know who, how weighty an obligation and how great a trust is laid upon you. Will you, as president of the council, pattern your life after that of our Lord Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve? Will you strive to demonstrate leadership that will keep our church in the vanguard of love, liberation, and reconciliation of all the family of God? I will endeavor to do so, to fulfill my obligation 
as president and manifest a faith that demonstrates the total commitment to love, liberation, and reconciliation. As officers of the Council of Bishops, we do here renew our pledge to uphold the highest in Christian leadership and to continue the unbroken tradition of liberation, love, and reconciliation as we live our motto, God our Father, Christ our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit our Comforter, humankind our family. stand and share in this together we have this charge of leadership as a legacy from our fathers and mothers we shall honor and guard it with our lives being faithful to our Lord and to the mandate of the people who elevated us from their ranks to this opportunity of service Together, the people will now say, we have a heart, mind, soul, and willingness to follow. Lead us and lead us well that we all might walk in love, liberation, and reconciliation, enabling us to be a visible manifestation of our Christian faith and works. I said that on your behalf. Yes. Amen. Bishop C. Wright. Let us pray. Dear God, as we come now, we give thanks unto you for this day. As we come giving you thanks for the African Methodist Episcopal church. We give you thanks for his leadership. We remember the leadership of Bishop Richard Allen and others as we come this moment giving you thanks for the present president of the Bishop's Council, the Bishop Ann Hennon Byfield. Thank you, dear God, for her leadership that she's already demonstrated and thank you for the secretary, the Bishop Rana Presford. And Lord, thank you for the assistant secretary for Bishop Stafford Wickham. Thank you for our senior bishop and all the bishops of the church. And as we come today, continue to strengthen our entire church, all of us, that we may continue to build your kingdom, advance it to the honor and glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Say amen and praise God for our new president, Bishop E. Ann Henny Byfield. church ought to say amen. I'm pleased now to present President of the Council of Bishops, titular head of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Bishop E. Ann Henny Byfield. Thank you. This moment, 
requires, thank you. This moment requires me to do the protocol. But I want to be amused if somebody texts me and said, Madam President, don't ever take off your cross. So <laughs> we learned it. To Senior Bishop Adam J. Richardson and Presiding Bishop and Host Bishop and Supervisor Richardson, to Bishop Wilford Messiah, President of the General Board and Supervisor Messiah, to Bishop John Franklin White, Chair of the General Conference Commission and Supervisor White, to Bishop Ashton Murphy McKenzie, Chair of the Program Committee and Supervisor Stan, we miss you. To the bishops of the church and their supervisors and families, to the general officers, spouses, and their intimate friends and families, to the judicial council spouses and their intimate friends and families, to the connection leadership, their spouses and intimate friends and family, to you, the members of the 51st session of the general conference, to the home continent and to Orlando, and those of you who are watching all around Orlando, we greet you. To the 16th district whom I cannot see or hear but know that they are cheering. To those of who are here in spirit but whose bodies are not. To the bishops who are not here, especially our classmate, Bishop Frank. To my husband, Ainsley. My sister, former supervisor, Yvonne Henning Parks. And the Hennings that are in the room and are watching. To my son, who's a preaching warrior but struggling to find relevance in the traditional black church to his wife, Adrian, and to my grandchildren. To my grandfather, Reverend Henry Hen Henning, and his wife built a church in Pecan Point, Arkansas. To my uncle, George, who was a preacher. To my spiritual anointed aunt, Blanche Cadell, who among many things planted Faith AME Church, which became Triunion in St. Louis. To my Aunt Wincy, who left the AME Church because she could not be ordained and went to the Seventh-day Church who would not ordain her and started two churches in Buffalo, New York. But then to my father and my mother, who Reverend Cecilia Williams Bryans reminds me that there's only one couple in all of black Methodism whose seed and womb brought forth two bishops in one family. Yannette was elected in Orlando, Florida in 1992. I laid hands on him with JP, my brother. In 2016, Yannette laid hands on me. Three bishops of that class, 1992, have died in the last four years. Bishop Yannette, Bishop Zedekiah Grady, Bishop McKinley Young, Bishop Bobby Wester remains with us. And to all of the preaching Hennings, John P., Kevin Garnett Jr., who died a year after he was admitted to the annual conference, to all of the new generation, Reverend Dr. Maria Williams Hawkins and Reverend Andrew Henning. In 2006, I wrote these words. My hope for the church my hope for the church is that we will once again love beyond our anger, live beyond our viewed limitations, expect the unexpected, recognize that we are one wherever we may be and we will not destroy ourselves, that we will no longer struggle with justice and full equality or seductive politics, but we will strengthen our weak resignations and recapture the spirit of our ancestors who built great cathedrals and schools and universities, initiated great human rights reforms and led people into salvation and restored broken communities, insisted on transparency and left an authentic legacy because they knew God was powerful, awesome, and can do anything more than we ask or think according to the power of God who works in us. And they simply let God be God over the church. That's a big wish, but we have a big God. And so for these past 18 months, imagining once again is what God requires. And so to be clear, the old ways of politics, the old alignment of power, 
and the continued exclusion of those some don't deem to be included is not what God is saying right now. We will never be the change, church, the, the same Church of Allen. We will never get back to the definition of normalcy. We will never reclaim our pseudo understanding of traditions or go back to empty pews with more people on Zoom than we have in church. God has shifted us and we must relax even in the tension to shift with God. Today, the first woman bishop preached and a woman president stood in front of her walking in the line. The church is shifting, and we can't go back to what we think God has defined us. So I asked God, why me in this season? And God said, it ain't about you. It's about us. Thank you, Bishop, for saying it's about us. It's about clergy and lay. The Americas, the Caribbeans, the Europe, Africa, India, and Latin America. It's, it's about us. Small churches, large churches. It's about us who are different in somebody else's eyes, but wonderfully made in God. That with the Council of Bishops, the communication, transformative prayer, and cooperation from each of you, we will continue an authentic legacy and realize our hope for the church. All of you have been selected with me for this season for a mutual need of equality, communal justice, strengthening the church, and expanding the kingdom. So thank you for giving me this time at bat but I won't hit the ball unless we work together. And thank you, a cloud of witnesses, that we're going to believe that God is going to make our strong Zion stronger. Thank you, Council of Bishops. sisters. The general conference will convene at one o'clock in this room. We look forward to your organization and your presence at one o'clock. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you. Before, before we get to the doxology, I am to Secretary, we've got some other announcements, and each delegation will meet in their room, their assigned room for the general conference. Please come early to get your temperature checked. Each delegation will have an assigned room you would gather in your assigned room. Announcement by our secretary. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just one of important announcement. We're asking all of the bishops to gather at 12 o'clock in rooms uh, 205 A and B for the press conference. Uh, only the bishops will be able to gather that due to the size of the room. And we want to continue to encourage everyone, please keep your mask on. Let us all do what we can to keep each other safe. Praise God, we are in the land of the living. Amen. Praise God for whom all blessings flow.
our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the saints. And the realization, yes, they are possibilities. Let's go and see. Rest, pull, and abide with you henceforth, now and forevermore. And the people of God sing. Yes. And we're going to ask that we would join now with the choir.